Hi, in this session we'll be developing your exam skills and evaluation quality by looking at the disadvantages of statistical infrequency. So let's start with developing the three disadvantages on the screen. For each one, consider and write a brief explanation of what the point in gold might mean and a reason why this is a limitation. So write your answers down and pause the video here for five minutes while you complete the task. Hopefully that was okay. You can see on the screen we've got the burger template from the last session, which we said then, and I'll reinforce now, is a really good writing tool that will help you to develop your structure in your evaluation. So the first point was that one limitation of statistical infrequency is that some rare behaviours are desirable. Hopefully you were able to add some elaboration yourself. There's a suggested elaboration on the screen. Finally, hopefully you added a reason for why this is a limitation. And you can see from the example on the screen, this doesn't have to be very long at all, just enough to conclude the point and put it into evaluation context. Point two was about not accounting for cultural differences. So hopefully you were able to think about the types of cultural differences that shouldn't be ignored. This means that any cultural differences about social norms or mental health are ignored. For example, in some cultures there are high numbers of people who claim to have auditory hallucinations and yet this is not considered abnormal. And then to finish off with why this is a limitation and hopefully you were able to add something to conclude your point yourself. Last one. This point was about the potential for misdiagnosis if abnormal behaviours are not rare. So hopefully you spotted that there are some behaviours that are common and not rare, like the examples I've used on the screen, like anxiety and depression. And then finishing off with, again, a reason, a wraparound reason why this is a limitation. Now, if you've never heard of counter criticisms before, this is just where we offer an opposing point to the one that we've initially made. For this task, Let's just focus on point one from earlier, the one about desirability. So try and think of how you could counter criticize that original point. And one suggestion when you do counter criticisms is to think about any relevant strengths or limitations that you already know. So here, for example, I'm asking you to counter criticize a disadvantage. But in earlier sessions, we had a look at the advantages of statistical infrequency. So you may find that there's a relevant advantage that you could use to counter this limitation. So pause the video here for five minutes while you discuss this with a partner, everyone is available. Or if not, think about it yourself, but write your answers down so that we can check them together soon. So here's our completed burger template from earlier. And hopefully you were able to come up with some type of counter. So my example on the board, is discussing that statistical infrequency as a definition of abnormality is able to identify undesirable and rare behaviours, such as intellectual disability disorder, which is characterised by an IQ score that's three or more standard deviations lower than the average IQ score. So this is my counter criticism, because even though the paragraph started off talking about how it's a limitation that some rare behaviours are counted as desirable, my counter argument is saying that despite that, there is still some really good uses of this tool. So where does this fit in with our burger template? Well, we also have a double whopper burger template that will help you to maintain structure when writing these level four style evaluations. And you can see on the screen that we still include the points. We still include our elaboration and the reason why something is a strength or a limitation, whichever it is that you're writing about. But on the double whopper evaluation template, what we're also going to add is our counter criticism. And then finally, for the bottom bun, we're going to offer a reason why our counter criticism was important and worth noting. So when you piece all of this information together, you should have something that looks like this. Pause here if you want to read this through again. A quick task for you now. So we can see on the screen that we've got our three limitations of statistical infrequency. And I've already given you the one counter criticism. What you would need to do now for the task is to write a counter criticism for the remaining two limitations. So pause the video here for five minutes while you finish this task. So hopefully you were able to come up with some of your own ideas. So for the point that starts that one limitation of statistical infrequency is that it does not count for cultural differences. Our counter, so if you remember the burger, once we get up to that counter opportunity, 
what we could suggest is that despite this, there are some behaviours that seem to be culturally universal, such as stereotypical gender traits. And for the last example, one limitation of statistical infrequency is that it could lead to misdiagnosis if abnormal behaviour is not rare. However, using distribution graphs to identify rare and common behaviours does have its advantage. For example, statistical infrequency can be used to identify developmental concerns in children.